the last but not least, this session number four, we will be talking about the transport, <coughs> collecting data in the transport sector. Uh, unlike the stationary emission sectors, transit by definition is mobile and can, and can pose challenges in both accurately calculating emission and allocating them to the cities uh, linked to the transit activities. But the transportation, but the transportation sector, uh, greenhouse invention inventory, can be vital metric that shows the impact of transportation policies and mitigation projects over the time. Uh, while cities have verifying uh, levels of control or influence over regional transportation policy and infrastructure decisions that affect the transit routes uh, of their city, a transportation inventory should inform and support actions that can influence emission reductions. Uh, in Slovenia, transport represents 47 of all the entire greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, buildings represent 14%, while agriculture represents 18%. Uh, and the industry only represents 12%. So we see that transport is a huge uh, consumer of the energy and huge uh, sources of pollution. Uh, this presentation aims to providing these practical approaches to collect data and build emission inventories for the transport uh, macro sector, focusing mainly on the CO2 and where possible also the methane, CH4 and the uh, N2O. Emission sources uh, in the transport space sector by the transit mode. We recognize emission sources in the transportation sector by the transit mode, uh, including the first one is on-road transportation, including electric and fuel-powered cars, taxis, buses, and so on. It's a railway, including trams, urban railways, subway systems, uh, intercity commuter relays, regional transportation, national rail system, and international rail system. Then it's a waterborne transportation, sightseeing fairings, uh, domestic intercity vehicles or international waterborne vehicles, aviation, including helicopters, domestic and international flights, and off-road transportation, including airport ground support equipment, agricultural tractors, chainsaws, forklifts, snowmobiles, and others. So, <laughs> Cities should identify applicable subcategories within each transit mode and report emissions for those subcategories as well as subsectors if these data are available. Out through the, out through in the transport macro sector, it is usually proved difficult to obtain energy data for each individual transport activity sectors, such as municipal fleet, public transportation, private and commercial transport. Uh, when collecting data and calculating emission inventories, uh, we recommend to follow the we recommend the following. Uh, this is based on the Covenant of Mayor recommendation. Data to be collected mainly concern the road and rail transport. Air and waterborne transport can be excluded. Exception might be the local ferries or maybe some local uh, air transportation uh, used for this uh, as, as as a public transportation. Road and rail transportation should be included if it is serving mainly for the local territory and it is if it's regulated by the local authority. That means that you can exclude highways and regional trains if no action are foreseen to be implemented by local authorities, for example, in the SECAP. The off-road transportation should be included only if related actions are foreseen. So if the municipality has an influence and possible and has a possibility to influence on these uh, sectors. It can be challenging to account for road transport activity sectors emissions in urban areas, given the nature of the road transport which contains numerous mobile sources moving within, but also across the boundaries of the urban territory, according to the various patterns. Uh, this category includes vehicles such as buses, cars, tracks, motorcycles, uh, on-road waste collections and transportation vehicles. Electric or hybrid vehicles can be charged 
at station within or outside the city. Charging stations might be at homes or workplaces that are already included in the stationary energy sector, so it is important to ensure energy used for electric vehicles charging is separated, including included in the stationary energy categories and not to be double counted. Uh, the energy consumption and associated emissions in road transport transport could be accounted for different ways. Among the most common methodologies are fuel sales method, territorial method, residential method, and city induced method. Uh, while fuel sales method is top down method, other three are bottom up methods. Now we will take closer to the, each of these methods now. Top down method, uh, fuel sales method. This method calculates on road transportation emission based on the total fuel sold within the city boundary. Uh, this method is primarily uh, relevant for the national level and only offers very basic information from the local level. The fuel sold on the territory is used as a proxy for transportation activity occurring in the same territory. Uh, calculating fuel sales emission required multiplying activity data, so quantity of the fuel sold by the greenhouse gas emission content of the fuel by the gas. And this is usually provided by the distributor. But practice has shown that the use of the fuel sales data is more precise for cities for which the number of vehicle trips over the city borders is small compared with the number of trips within the city. Reason being that uh, fuel sold in the territory of the local authority may not, in most of the cases, correctly reflect the fuel used in the territory. The amount of fuel sold and fuel consumed may be different for various, various reasons, uh, comfort of fueling, availability of fueling stations, prices, and so on. Uh, this is the case especially for smaller cities in which the number of fueling stations is small. In addition, the factors having an impact on fuel cells may change in time, opening and closing the fueling station, and therefore the changes in fuel cells data may be not correctly reflect changes in traffic, for example, like fuel facts. Bottom-up methods. Uh, to be able to identify measures, it is vital to go beyond that and develop an understanding of travel patterns, which is possible only with using uh, on the bottom-up approaches. Uh, bottom-up approaches generally rely on the different frameworks for determining total emissions, which rely on the following uh, formula. Uh, this is greenhouse uh, gas emission is equal vehicles uh, uh, vehicles um, uh, used for the transportation motor share energy intensity and carbon intensity of the fuel so uh, vehicle kilometer so kilometers of the vehicle uh, depends on the motor share energy intensity and carbon intensity of a fuel this method uh, quantifies emissions from the uh, transportation activities undertaken by city residents only, uh, considering uh, considering uh, all their trips within or across the city borders. It requires information on this uh, resident uh, vehicle kilometer traveled from usually they coming from the vehicle registration records and service on travel behavior or residents. Uh, modest efforts are required to get relatively solid estimates within uh, combination of vehicle of vehicle fleet registration data and service among residents and basic travel behavior. While these kinds of survey might be more manageable and cost effective, their limitation to, resi to resident activity overlooks the impact of non-city resident traffic by the commuters, tourists, log logistic providers and other travelers. Uh, induced activity method. Um, this method seeks to quantify transportation emissions induced uh, by the city, including trips that being and or are fully contained within the city, uh, usually excluding pass-through trips. This method is mostly used in the United States. Uh, 
So we will not put a lot of uh, effort to realize this method. Territorial method, um, also called uh, geographical method. This one is, uh, I would say, most recommended. Uh, it's all by the also by the covenant of mayors because it's a good compromise in terms of accuracy and needed resources concerning the data collection, the estimation of the CO2 emissions and the analysis of the impact of the uh, local actions. This method uh, quantifies emissions from the transportation activity occurring solely within the local boundaries, regardless of the trips, origins or destination and whatever the drivers is resident of the, of the municipality or not. Basic traffic counts are required to estimate the number of vehicles traveling, including the average trip length and potentially also the type of the vehicles. Following these uh, parameters are very important, as uh, mentioned before. The model share and the distribution of trips to the different types of vehicles, uh, describing the portion of the trips by different modes. In urban areas, the most important mode relates to road passengers, which can be further disaggregated into the vehicle types, like, for example, passenger, light duty or heavy duty for road vehicles. Uh, fuel carbon intensity relates to the emission factors of the fuels and the share of the biofuels in the fuels. So that means is it diesel, motor, gasoline, petrol, electricity, even hydrogen can be uh, as a fuel. So the second, the next one is the vehicle kilometers traveled as a measure of the traffic flow and the elect energy intensity as a measure of the fuel consumption, actually in use or alternative aver average assessed as the product of the average fuel consumptions of the vehicle type, liters of the fuel per kilometer, and the net caloric value of the fuel. This means in watt hours per liter. The model share and distribution of the trips to different types of vehicle, like a fleet distribution. Model share describes portion of the tricks by different uh, modes. Model share can be defined as the share of the people using a particular mode of the transport within the overall transport usage of, uh, of an urban area. In urban area, the most important modes relates to road passengers, which then can be further disaggregated into these vehicle types. Uh, at minimum, the fleet distribution should distinguish uh, between the passenger cars and taxis, uh, heavy and light duty vehicles, buses, small-scale buses, and other vehicles used for the public transportation services, and the two-wheelers, so motorbikes. Uh, the fleet distribution can be estimated based on the one of the following sources. So traffic counts, this does not reveal the relative driving levels, vehicles registered in the municipality, national statistic, or Eurostat European statistic, at the national or regional level. Fuel carbon intensity and the share of uh, biofuels. Um, this fuel carbon intensity relates to the emission factors of the fuels. Is it diesel, motor, gasoline, petrol, electricity, and others? If the local authority plans to promote the use of the biofuels uh, reduced in a sustainable manner in the SECAP, it is important to estimate the share of biofuels in the fuel used in the local territory. So this can be done, um, for instance, by making polls of the most important fuel distributors in the local territory and surrounding areas. For local authorities that do not intend to promote biofuels, national average short shares can be found from this Euros, uh, Eurostat statistics. When it comes to the vehicles, uh, kilometers traveled, um, uh, vehicle chemists traveled are a measure of traffic flow determined uh, by the multiplying the number of vehicles on a given road or traffic network by the average length of their trips measured in kilometers or miles. It can be measured as a passenger kilometer, a unit of measure equals one passenger transported a distance of one kilometer and ton kilometer. This means a unit of measure is one ton transported a distance of one kilometer. 
While acknowledging the fact that local authorities may find it difficult to collect mileage data, they are recommended to do so in order to be able to prepare as accurate as possible emission inventory into the road transport. Uh, the first step is local authorities can access data from local sources, such as municipal transport department or the local state or national road management authorities. In the case of local authorities' own fleet and public transportation, fleet the mileage driving can be estimated using the information in the odometers of the vehicles. Uh, in some local authorities, it is mandatory that they collect uh, vehicles traveled uh, by after every uh, business transportation is done. So this data should not be very difficult to obtain. Uh, alternatively, also the fuel consumption by municipality and public, public transportation fleet can be estimated based on the fueled amount. So, however, the attention has to be paid to the fact that the, this uh, emission inventory should consider only mileage driven and fuel used in the local territory. In the case of contracted service for public transport or other services, the information should be also available by the operator. Energy intensity is a measure of the fuel consumption, uh, assessed as the product of the average fuel consumptions of the vehicle type uh, in liters per kilometer, and the net caloric value as the fuel in watt hours per liters. So average fuel consumptions of each vehicle category depends on the types of the vehicles in the category, age, and also on the number of other factors such as driving cycle. cycle, cycle. Uh, we also have to be careful. I heard once again, I would like to highlight the electric cars. You have to avoid double counting uh, the electricity as the fuel for the electric cars. So, <clears throat> here are basic data and potential sources for estimating emissions from uh, road transportation. Um, when we need vehicles flow and mileage run for the transportation purposes, uh, this can be found in the local transport department and should be publicly known. Uh, service, uh, including number of vehicles passing fixed point per till time. Uh, this can some service count can count vehicles numbers by type of the vehicles, but information of the fuel is usually in this case not available. Um, there is also some platforms you can find uh, the, the, the data that are required to calculate emissions in the transport. There are some others uh, data which and sources where, where this can be found. Um, just make sure to be consistent when calculating uh, this data. So they use always the same source uh, for, so for not only in the preparation phase, but also when you report uh, according to your uh, energy, uh, sustainable energy action plans. The rail transportations, uh, we usually divide it in two parts, uh, urban rail, transportation and other rail transportation. Uh, urban rail transportation, especially in the big cities, uh, this is a tram, metro or local trains. Uh, the inclusion of this urban transportation uh, into this emission effort is strongly recommended, uh, while the other rail transportation, which covers the long distance, intercity and regional rail transportations, uh, uh, can be included in this emission inventory if the local authority uh, has or can propose the measure to reduce emissions into in in, uh, in these sectors. There are two types of data for rail transportation: consumptions of electricity and consumptions of fuel in diesel uh, trains. Use of diesel locomotives and urban rail transportation is less common for the local services. A uh, number of providers of rail transport in the local territories is usually low. Uh, the local authorities is recommended to ask the annual electricity and fuel use data directly from the service providers by fuel types and by the applications, so by the transit system rate and so on. If such data are not available, then uh, 
course, local authorities can make a survey, survey real companies for fuel consumption and amount of goods or people moved, uh, calculate real fuel consumption per ton of freight or per ton of persons uh, that are moved, e.g. gallons or liters of diesel per person. Uh, you can also scale up the incomplete uh, transportation activity data of tons of freight or uh, people movement. The total city activity may be determined through the local, state or national statistic and transportation agency for the city. You can also scale down uh, if you have a uh, national data, uh, then you can scale it out into the uh, smaller population to the local authorities. Uh, of course, you can scale down national railway fuel consumption based on the city populations or any other indicators. And uh, emission inventory, uh, all greenhouse gas emission, uh, whether uh, direct emission from fuel combustion or indirect emissions due to consumption of the grid supplied energy, occurring for the transportation purposes within local authority boundary shall be reported. Um, in addition, local authorities are recommended uh, to further disaggregate by mode on road, rail or waterborne navigation uh, and by fleet type, municipal, uh, public and private or commercial transport as suggested by the Covenant of Mayors. Recommended activity sectors to be included uh, into the transport maxo sectors are described in the detail of uh, this table. So, municipal fleet, both uh, road transportation, public transportation is also road and off road transportation, and private and commercial transport is divided on the rail and waterborne transportation. To develop this CO2 emission inventory for the transport sectors uh, and to assess the direct and indirect CO2 emission reduction, there are potential uh, platforms uh, you can use it um, for this uh, calculation of these emissions. Um, we will not go in details of these uh, platforms. So it's not so very difficult to calculate this kind of the emissions. I would like to thank. Thank you. Um, if I jump in, uh, there were two unanswered questions in the chat from Mr. Milos and from Olga Krajewska. So maybe these uh, two questions can be answered and tackled right now. OK. Let me. Um, OK, I'll yeah. start with the beginning. <laughs> yes, some we of them were, all, yeah, were already okay. answered, but. Uh, uh, yeah, so this is the invent inventory should only date about the municipally owned buildings. Um, not entire city stock. Now it is if you're talking about the SECAPs and SEPs, we only uh, collect the data for the municipal buildings. That's mean for the public buildings, but uh, we will for these buildings we also also introduce the energy audits but for the entire other building stocks it is possible uh, to receive um, the energy consumption data especially for the multi-residential buildings for the managing authorities of these buildings can be received but it's not mandatory uh, because it's uh, only a minimum influence municipality has on these buildings so if it is possible, use the mathematical uh, statistical methods such as scaling down or extrapolation to determine uh, this kind of the information or through the survey you can send to the some sample of the population in the in the municipality to receive this kind of data. I hope I answer this question. Um, what was the other question, Jiva, do you know? Uh, this is the other one. Uh, energy audit could also be made for the industry in large companies. Uh, yes, uh, insulina is mandatory for the large companies uh, to perform energy audit. 
uh, if per for performing energy audit and if they uh, introduce energy management system into the municipality, uh, they they can reduce uh, the financial. Uh, they can reduce uh, the energy bills. They, there are some fees there. They are not mandatory to pay. So it's very stimulated for the uh, large industry to perform energy audits. But the results of the energy audits are not mandatory to be publicly available. As I said, um, most of the industry, especially large scale industry, uh, they don't want to reveal this kind of data because they consider it as a confidential. Is there any another question? Yes, there was a question from uh, Mr. Milos about uh, if SICAP can be made for an entire region or for several municipalities and um, how the targets are then set for each of the municipalities separately or are there joint targets uh, for the entire region? The document can be common for the region, for the several municipality, but there must there have to be some specific action plans for each municipality. So the one or two municipality or one region can approach to produce uh, a common SECAP, but it has to be revealed uh, according to the each municipality. Action plan have to be real, uh, will be focused on the each municipality. Okay, and the last question was from Olga Krajowska. Uh, do you have any examples of countries in which the national GHG emission monitoring and reporting framework is comprehensive and well integrated across different levels of government? Well, uh, I always reveal in this case on Germany. <laughs> in Germany, they have a. In, sorry, in Germany, they have always. Uh, they are very, um, I would say, very uh, strict and very precise on this. There are some SECAPs also in, uh, as I said, I mentioned in my presentation, the SECAP of Belgrade, which is uh, very well done. Uh, I think it was, um, I'm not sure, but I, I believe it was uh, co-financed by the GIZ. This is a German company for international cooperation. And uh, this SECAP is very good uh, defined and have a very good uh, greenhouse gas uh, based on invention uh, inventory. Uh, also, I would say I would highlight some of the um, Austrian SECAPs um, for Vienna, for example. It's very good uh, SECAPs, also very precise and very good uh, distributed disgust health emissions. Uh, the problem is uh, that the SECAPs are usually uh, in the national languages, only the executive summary is in English. So if you find uh, the country with uh, similar language than yours, then you can find um, some very good examples of the SECAPs. OK, and the second part of Ms. Olga's question was, uh, how are the local inventories and action plans embedded in the national frameworks, if at all? Well, usually do not, do not you know, because uh, the public sector is, uh, at least in Slovenia, is divided owned by the municipality or owned by the state. For example, when we do energy audits, we do it uh, for all the kindergartens, all the schools because these buildings are owned by the municipalities, but high schools or uh, faculties are not uh, owned by the municipality and we do not perform any energy audits. We do not perform any, we don't prepare any uh, measures to implement energy efficiency in this kind of the building. So these two um, sectors are not very uh, compliable and uh, there are different uh, owners and different actions and different uh, financial sources, of course. OK, we have one more question from Mr. Umesh Bhatt. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Uh, how a common municipal plan is adjustable with different economic, human and industrial activity? Yeah, this is actually a very good question. <laughs> um, on the first side, I would say not so well, but if you preparing uh, the plan, uh, it have to be this if you if you prepare an action plan, this action plan have to be considered. It should take into consideration, of course, the financial aspects of the municipality. That's why it have to be done within uh, with uh, in the in cooperation with financial department. Uh, of course, it have to take into the consideration the human 
activities uh, inside of the missiles. So there was usually we influence the human activities uh, with some promotional and uh, educational activities, especially into the in the, the kindergartens and schools, and through the different activities and campaigns uh, over the year. And um, if there is a good cooperation between the municipality and local industry, then we can also receive uh, some of the data concerning the energy consumptions in the cities, and then industry can also comply their uh, action plans with, with in line with the municipal plans. So it depends on the municipal attitude towards to the uh, industrial sectors. Um, for example, we have a huge company of the home appliance. It's a worldwide known, Gorenia. And this company uh, at the beginning, they did not want to cooperate in any, they did not want to reveal any of data. They did not want to cooperate with municipality. But later with, uh, when we uh, start our cooperation, we will start our conversation, when they really realize that the municipality has uh, also uh, the goals to achieve to to decrease energy consumption in the city, they starting also to feel that they are also part of this. They are part of this environment, and now I would say uh, they are cooperating, not as much as this we, we, we would want to, but you know they are providing some information. They are uh, cooperating with the municipality. Okay, those were all the questions that were in the chat. So if anyone has any more questions, you can ask now. You can always send also the questions to, to Jiva or to me. Uh, you will receive uh, all these presentations. So, but. Okay, if not, uh, I would like to thank you all for participating. I hope you received some uh, useful and good informations. So uh, if you have any stage of your preparation of the setups or uh, any other action plans, if you should have any questions, you can always uh, ask. Uh, you can always refer to me or to my colleague Jiva. You have our emails, uh, you have our con contacts. So once again, thank you for your participating. Uh, there has been some guests uh, from outside of the Europe, from Far East. Uh, I guess I should say also thank you for participating in this late hour of the day in your, your territory. And um, thank you all once again uh, for the participation. I invite you to also to join the other uh, courses inside of the uh, Energy Watch projects, which will be in, in the next weeks. And have a nice day and good luck. Thank you.